everyone. So this week I was actually in New York all week and I didn't take a lot of vlogging footage, mostly because I think you guys saw I was selling my Canon Rebel T5i. So this is my new camera. It's a Canon Rebel T7i. Uh, and the biggest difference is this one has Wi-Fi. So right now, as I'm filming, I can actually see myself on the screen and it downloads much quicker. And before that, when I had a camera that didn't have Wi-Fi, I'd have to take the SD card out, pop it into the computer, make sure the footage looked okay, and sometimes I would have done an entire day's worth of footage and for whatever reason, the color was off or the background was weird and you can't tell when you're just looking at the preview screen um, versus looking at it on a computer. So this is a huge, huge help. Um, and plus I can remote control the camera and a lot of the different settings. I also bought a new lens. So I before had the Canon stock lenses that come with the kit and I upgraded to a Sigma lens. Now I did an 18 to 35 millimeter lens and I'll leave a link below if you want it. And it has a low f-stop. So in theory, the low f-stop should give a blurry background, whereas I'm in focus. It's what a lot of the beauty bloggers use. I just think it looks prettier um, and it's a really nice lens. So, you know, sometimes if you don't have money for the best DSLR camera, I would say buy a less expensive DSLR, but splurge on the lens because the lens really is what makes the whole difference in how you look on camera. Um, so that's enough video talk. Although I did, while I was in New York, I did meet up with one of the women who contributed to vlogging for authors and we did a tip on intros and outros for you. So I should have that foot footage ready next month. Um, but this Thursday, instead, what I do have ready for you is I ran into my friend who's an editor at one of the major publishing houses in New York. And we talked about just how to increase your chances of getting published um, when you submit to the slush pile. And not just her uh, particular publishing house, but just to any in general. And she had some really great tips and ideas for you. And at the end, she also gave her own personal personal wish list. If you want to submit to her, you can just mention that you saw her in my vlog and um, hopefully it'll work out. So you can get a sense for her personality and you know what she likes to see and what she's interested in. So the main reason I was actually in New York was for my friend Paula's wedding, which is out in Montauk. Hi! Hi. So this is Alex and we're both here for Paula's wedding. And this is Lisa, and yes, we're both here for Paula's wedding. And it's at Navy Beach, which is a cute outdoor restaurant. And she has these cute little gift cards. It's adorable cake. It's only you and me. Where have you been all my life? One look from you and now I'm hooked. Come on, let's give this a try. publishing schedule and I never put one together before because I really like the whole spirit of self-publishing and kind of writing when I felt like it and I always had something come up so I never wanted to be you know beholden to something uh, that was set in stone but I am a business I do write because I love it but I also write and I'd like to make money so that I can continue writing obviously uh, so what I did is I but I put together what's called the nano planner because it was really hard for me to do the nano uh, to know exactly which words I needed each day. It's almost like the word count was a surprise to me. So I simply took out two weeks and I just wrote, right? I, I had a draft, I had an outline, but I just wrote and on average, I write about 500 words an hour. So that's how long it takes me to write a book. Not my typing speed, that's just how long it takes me to write um, what I consider decent content uh, rather than just kind of like a really bad first draft. I feel like this is a decent first draft. Um, so knowing that and how many hours I can dedicate each week to writing um, is how I put together my publishing schedule, right? So I estimated the number of words that have to go into each book and then I estimated 
how long it would take me to do the outline for each book, and then how long it would take me to make that word count, then send it in to my friend Mark, who edits all of my books, to, and then he usually gets that back to me in a couple days, and then to get those edits and make those changes is maybe another couple, couple days. So based on that, that's how I put together my publishing schedule, and I also built in at least a one week buffer for everything. Like even if everything was perfect, which we all know life isn't perfect, I built in a one week buffer so this way I could publish ahead of time rather than behind. My point is, I think everyone should put together a publishing schedule. I think it really helps you with, you know, deciding, um, communicating out to your readers when they can expect your next book, especially when you're self-publishing. I know when you are traditional publishing, it's kind of decided by the house, but this I think just helps you to look a little more professional. Um, and I will leave a worksheet below that shows you how I did mine and how I mapped everything out. So hopefully that can help you too. All right, well, I hope everyone's having a great week and tune back in on Thursday because we will have that interview with my friend and we'll talk about how to submit and also what her wish list is for romance books. All right, bye everyone.